Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Please hit subscribe if you are new. Kelbrook is back and he's back with a bang. A second round stoppage of Sergei Rabchenko. Very, very impressive stuff indeed from Kel Brook. From the first minute of the first round, it was clear that Kel Brook still has a lot to offer this sport. He came out, he was nice on his feet, he was light on his feet, he was moving round Rabchenko well. He started to establish the jab. Quite early on in the fight, you see him landing a floss 1-2 jab cross combination on Rabchenko. Brook was timing his man quite nicely. You're seeing him sort of moving around the ring, starting to use that uppercut, which he threw to the body and to the head. And, you know, very, very early on, it was clear um, that Kel Brook just had a lot, lot, lot more about Rabchenko. I spoke about this in my pre-fight video, that I thought Rabchenko was solid. I didn't think he had glaring weaknesses. I didn't think he had remarkable strengths. Um, and what we saw is that Kel Brook today is just at a level far above solid you know european level which rabchenko probably represents um i've spoken several times on the youtube channel about kel brook subsequent to his loss with errol spence at first i was inclined to think kel brook may be coming to the autumn of his career i was thinking he'd had two back-to-back -back losses that he'd had two very 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 bad injuries um, and I was inclined to think that Kel Brook and his future career, um, you know, may maybe maybe there was a, a limited time span on it. But having seen him today, um, I think my more recent frame of mind was actually the correct one. So subsequent to the Kel Brook Spence fight, I rewatched it and I kind of said on the channel that you know anyone who can cause Errol Spence as much problems as Kel did in the first half of their fight. And, you know, before the injury Kel sustained in that fight, you could make a solid case that he was still ahead against Errol Spence. And, you know, anyone who could cause Errol Spence that many problems in the ring would still be capable of beating the vast majority of fighters active. And, you know, Kel Brook today, he looked sharp. Um, he looked strong. He looked like he was hitting with power. Uh, he timed Rabchenko very sweetly in the second round and puts him out. Initially, thought Rabchenko was going to get up, but he, he stayed down. He was unsteady and um, didn't make the 10 count. So, yeah, Kel Brook wins by second round stoppage and looks very, very good doing it. Um, at £154, clearly he's nowhere near as drained and nowhere near as depleted as he was in previous fights at £147. So that is... Um, Obviously going to bode well for Kel Brook throughout the course of his career, especially as he gets older now. You know, um, as you're getting older, for someone who was so big at welterweight, it must get increasingly hard to deplete yourself down. Uh, it may be that that will see um, Kel Brook's power um, still be a factor at 154. Obviously, he'll be in with much bigger men and tougher men than at 147. But at the same time, uh, with Kel not having to drain himself down that final half a stone, perhaps he'll retain a bit more power and a bit more snap in his work. And maybe we saw some of that tonight against Rabchenko. Uh, Rabchenko's only been stopped once before by Tony Harrison. Got no reason to say that he's uh, not a durable opponent. And, you know, Kel Brook's got him out of there in pretty good fashion. So, you know, real, real credit to Kel Brook. Um, you can't really fault him on tonight's performance. Everything went perfectly for him. Um, one thing I did notice, I don't think Kel Brook is a big guy at 154. Um, obviously, that probably isn't a surprise, given that he's come up for 147. Um, but looking at Kel next to Errol Spence last time, looking at Kel next to Gennady Golovkin when they fought, and tonight, looking at Kel against Rabchenko, I think my analysis is that Kel is a small to medium-sized 154-pound fighter. Now, Rabchenko probably isn't the biggest guy in the world himself, um, but if Kel Brook fights some of the champions at 154, um, I really think he uh, he could be going up against people who have a substantial size advantage to him. You know, in recent years we've had guys like Canelo, uh, Andrade, Charlo, uh, Hurd. You know, these sort of guys operating at 154, and I think these guys are substantially taller, rangier guys than Kel Brook. So that could potentially be a factor in future fights with him. Um, but what he does at his best is box, box from distance, move, jab, time. And, you know, from what we've seen in the first half of the Spence fight and from what we've seen uh, in tonight's Shrebchenko fight, he's still got a lot, lot, lot to offer um, with that in mind. Uh, I've got a lot of thoughts on the undercard. Um, 
uh, Gavin McDonald, David Allen, Rocky Fielding. Uh, a lot of comments that I want to make on that. Um, but my plan now is to go to bed and try and get two or three hours sleep and then wake myself up for the Lewis Ortiz fight. Um, the Luis Ortiz Deontay Wilder fight, which I hope to cover later tonight on the channel. I'm planning to do one of my extended 30 plus minute longs morning after the night before video tomorrow, where we'll talk about all of tonight's action. We'll maybe touch on Kovalev, Bivol, Wilder, Brook, and I plan to cover the undercard, you know, the Gamalia Five fight, the David Allen fight, the Rocky Fielding fight. I plan to cover that undercard um, during tomorrow's video. Um, so, I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up early. Obviously, with such a brief fight, probably not needing the longest post-fight video. So I'll wrap it up early. Um, please hit subscribe, which will allow you to check out my Lewis Ortiz Deontay Wilder post-fight reaction later, and also my next day thoughts video tomorrow. Please hit the thumbs up and leave your comments on Cal Brooks' return in the section below. Thanks for tuning in.